It's obviously a bell, but it's a bell of a rather peculiar kind. What do you think it is? <laughs> It is a Tibetan singing bell, peculiar for two main things. First of all, I can take the clapper out and strike the bell on the side and listen to the length of time it spends ringing. In fact, I've timed that, it'll go for at least half a minute, which is much better than the average kitchen bell that you might have around the place. But more remarkably, look at this flange around here, it's sort of flat. If I take the clapper and rub it on there, around and round, listen to what the bell does it starts to sing, and very loudly. And that's why it's called a singing bell. Well, it's very hard to get hold of one of those. You probably couldn't, and you couldn't make one because it's very peculiar metal. But you can get that effect with stuff around the house, particularly a good quality wine glass. Take one of these and clamp the base down to the tabletop. Make sure it's got a stem because that'll work better. And Put a bit of water in it, make sure the glass and your finger are free from both grease and detergent, and by soaking your finger for a bit and rubbing it gently around the rim of the glass, you should be able to make it sing in just the same way. Here we go. That's working rather like the bow on a violin string. It makes the whole glass sing and you get that beautiful, pure note, as long as the glass is good quality. Don't try it with one of these. That's a rough kitchen tumbler and you can Try that to your heart's content, it'll just squeak at you. No good, go for a wine glass. But because they're expensive, make sure you're allowed to. And you'll find that different wine glasses will make different sounds, and if you want to tune it, you can change the note by pouring water in or tipping it out. Let's try putting a bit in, and the tone should drop. Here we go. Here we are, it's dropped. If I tip the water out, it'll become a treble one, like that. Well, musical glasses have been known for a long time, but the first kind was simply pinged or struck. This woodcut of 500 years ago shows glasses filled to different levels with water and being struck. And they made a sound like that. But sometime later, somebody discovered that by wetting your finger and rubbing the edge of a well-made glass, you'd get that pure note. When Benjamin Franklin visited England, these musical glasses like that were being played. He was entranced and he went home and invented musical glasses as an instrument. It was a sort of treadle machine, a bit like an old sewing machine, and the treadle turned uh, a cylinder, which was really a whole lot of glasses stacked inside each other, and with wet fingers, Benjamin Franklin played it. That really caught on in Europe, and lots of famous people came to admire the sound of the harmonica, as he called it. Mozart wrote for it, and this is some of the music he wrote. Beethoven wrote for it too. The poet Goethe wrote poems about it. And Mesmer, who was the father of hypnosis, used the sound to help to put his patients into a trance. Not that the sound was always good. Some people said it made you deranged. In parts of Europe, it was forbidden to play this, and the police would lock you up in jail if you even tried. Well, it became very popular, and then it passed away, and today it's really nothing more than a musical curiosity. But it needn't be. In fact, if you get these glasses and practice at home, you can play your own musical harmonica or glass harmonica. You can even get chords by wetting two fingers and getting two glasses side by side and rubbing them together. It takes a bit of practice, but if you get it right, you should get something of a chord. And by getting really expert, you can produce the sort of sound that you heard a bit earlier, played by Bruno Hoffman. So give it a go you might become one of the very few harmonica players in the world today. <laughs>